Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer here today, and today what I want to talk to you about is the connection between your adrenals and your thyroid. By supporting your adrenal glands, you're also going to be supporting your thyroid gland. And if you're suffering with thyroid problems, meaning that you're still experiencing hair loss and brain fog, you're still experiencing depression or anxiety, you still have fatigue and weight gain, um, there's a connection between the adrenals and thyroid that I want to share with you. And this is a huge, huge connection if you ever want to restore function back to your thyroid gland. Most people who suffer with thyroid problems continue to suffer and experience these symptoms despite taking their thyroid hormones. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're watching this video. Maybe you're, you're searching the internet for information about what else can be done to help support your thyroid gland. Well, today's video is going to help you understand that and so much more. Today's video, I'm going to explain to you one of the most overlooked parts of your body that's really so essential uh, to the good function and the, and the good support to your thyroid gland. Adrenal fatigue, adrenal insufficiency, or adrenal exhaustion, these are all really synonymous. These are all the same terms used to describe adrenal glands that have just become tired and run down. No matter what you call it, if you suffer with thyroid disease and you're not feeling all that much better, what you need to understand is that you need to have your adrenal glands properly evaluated. So whether you're in adrenal exhaustion or your adrenals are overactive, what I want to share with you in this video is some foundational and fundamental steps um, to help restore uh, function back to your thyroid naturally, okay? So the number one thing that you, you'll need to do in order to do this is you're gonna need to avoid adrenal stimulants, okay? And what that essentially means that um, adrenal stimulants are things that are gonna stress out your adrenal glands. And these can come in the form of, of um, physical traumas. These can come in the, in the form of chemical stressors. And these, without a doubt, can be in, in the form and shape of emotional things, okay? Things we also put into our body on, on any given daily basis. So some of the more common ones that uh, hopefully that you're, you're uh, aware of or you will be aware of by the end of this video is that coffee, soda, energy drinks, monster drinks, Red Bull, things with guarana in them, these are all things that will massively, massively stress out your adrenal glands. And the interesting thing is, is there's probably not a day that goes by where a patient will come to our office and we'll start working with them, looking at what they're eating, what they're, what they're drinking, what they're putting into their body. And we find out that a lot of these people that are just chronically tired, that can't make it throughout the day, um, are basically fueling their body with the very things that are stressing out their body, stressing out their system, and stressing out their adrenal glands even more. So again, if that's the case, you really want to you know, do your best. You, you have to avoid these things, and that becomes really critical in terms of supporting your adrenals, but also supporting your thyroid. The next thing you want to do is you will want to avoid concentrated sugars, okay? So that means fructose and sucrose, okay? Fructose is basically the sugars that you'll find in fruit, and sucrose is the, basically the, the sugar that you find in table sugar, okay? But no matter what you, um, you know, no matter whether or not you're eating fructose or sucrose, sugar is sugar is sugar, and that's the point that I really want you to understand. Your adrenal glands are heavily dependent upon good, healthy blood sugar control. And if you're stressing them out by putting fructose, again, that, that fruit sugar, um, or sucrose into your body, that is going to, again, create fatigued, stressed out adrenal glands. The next one is, is something that hopefully you're familiar with, is high fructose corn syrup. And unfortunately, everything that is sweetened today has this garbage in it, high fructose corn syrup. So again, the point here is that sugar is sugar is sugar. Doesn't matter when it all gets broken down into your body, it stresses out your body, uh, stresses out your adrenal glands. The next two are pretty obvious, nicotine and alcohol. These are, these, are, um, these are just major, major adrenal stimulants, but even cutting back just a little bit can do just a, a, a huge wealth of, of, of good to your adrenal glands. Um, what kind of foods should you avoid if you suspect that you have a problem with your adrenals? Well, basically any food that you have an allergy to, whether that be like a peanut allergy, that's, that's probably a pretty obvious one. You know, anything that causes you to blow up or swell up or break out in hives, those are, those are obvious allergies or food allergens, but there's also what we call delayed hypersensitivity food. These are food sensitivities. This is a food that you eat today, and maybe a week from now, or two weeks from now, or three weeks from now, you have a flare-up of the, the, the pain and the swelling maybe in your joints. Maybe your blood sugar becomes a little bit more erratic. Maybe you start to have headaches and migraines that start to flare up all over again. And this is where specialized testing is really critical in identifying these, these, type, of, uh, these type of foods. But some of the more common ones that um, you should avoid, you know, just from the, from the starting point, are things like dairy, wheat, corn, uh, chocolate, gluten, shellfish, and then your nightshades. And those are gonna be things like tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. 
Um, basically, when you, when you eat these foods, they're going to cause a massive release of not only histamine in your body, but a massive inflammatory response, which in turn is going to uh, upregulate your body's immune system, and that in turn will cause a more uh, of a fight or flight response to your adrenal glands. Again, taxing your adrenal glands. And that's really what we want to do. We want to try to minimize the, the amount of stress that's being placed on the adrenals from a dietary perspective uh, as it relates to this video. Other foods that you want to avoid are things uh, where, that are partially hydrogenated fats, okay? This is basically going to be um, anything where you start to, to um, you know, start reading labels and you start to notice that it says hydrogenated, okay? That's a, that's a big one. So these are trans fats. These are going to be things like cottonseed oil. These are going to be things like corn oil, canola oil, vegetable oil. And again, these oils uh, are unhealthy fats, okay? They're going to make uh, your adrenals dysfunction. They're going to cause you to get fat. They're going to change the ratio of good fats to bad fats in your body. You know, it's, it's pretty well known that we eat way too many omega-6s in proportion to omega-3s. And, you know, there's a very, very healthy relationship that, that should exist between omega-6s to omega-3s. And where, when we're eating all of these trans fats, we're going to start increasing the ratio of omega-6s. And that's really what we want to avoid. The next thing are these uh, are artificial sweeteners, okay? These are going to be things like Splenda, Aspartame, Sweet and Low. These are basically neurotoxic chemicals. These are things that basically will destroy nerves, the, the, the neurons in your body. They have all uh, negative impacts on cognitive function of the brain, memory, learning. So I highly, highly advise you to stop using any of these things, Splenda, Aspartame, and Sweet and Low. Um, these are again are artificial uh, sugars. They make they will make you fat by tricking your body to actually eat more. Okay, so you really want to avoid these things. The next thing is overtraining. I see this a lot in our office. I work with a lot of athletes, and uh, a lot of athletes, believe it or not, are very tired. They're run down. They're fatigued. And what's happening is is that they're overtraining. And this is uh, very very common in marathon runners and people that are going to the gym every day, working out for maybe an hour, an hour and a half. So again, these are your extreme athletes. So again, you want to be very, very careful with this overtraining. So really keep it simple when it comes to, to your training. Um, overtraining keeps your body locked in that fight or flight response, and that's going to stress out your adrenals. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video on just on some of the, the causes of adrenal fatigue, but as well as some of the dietary changes that you can make in order to restore function back to your adrenals. And uh, if you suspect that you have adrenal fatigue, contact our office, and we'll help you get back on track to feeling good again. Take care.